Hey everybody, I am Jeff Teague. Welcome to Toyota Car Care Talk. This is Ali, Master Diagnostic Technician and Toyota Guru. He's probably got the answers you're looking for. We're gonna talk about Toyota maintenance, service, and repair. First question, Ali, can you please explain if it's true that you can't move an electric car with a flat battery that you have to charge it first? So their example is if your car runs low on a highway battery, the, does the tow truck have to charge it before it can be towed off? Well, they don't really have to charge it. Mm -hmm. If it's the 12 volt battery, just like a car that won't start, you can jump it. All the hybrids have a way to jump the vehicle. On an earlier vehicle, uh, video that you had, we had demonstrated how to jump it. If the battery is in the trunk, usually in the engine compartment, mm -hmm. there is a little red cover. If you look with the fuse box, you can lift it and there is a little metal plate and you can jump it from the just like you do a normal car. And this is only the 12 volt battery. Right, not the now, big hybrid traction battery. That's true. Now, if the car has an issue with a hybrid battery or if the car has an issue that is considered to be unsafe to be on and a hybrid battery being shorted to ground would be one because you don't want it to happen, the computers would figure it out and never go to ready on or never go to accessory. If that happens, you may not be able to do it. But as a normal lure, if the only thing you have is a dead battery, 12 volt battery, you can jump the car, maybe start it and just drive to the dealership. Okay, great advice. All right, this next viewer has a very specific question about a very specific car. My 2010 Highlander Hybrid Limited is not starting at all, nor shifting to any gears. I have this message displayed on my screen, brake malfunction, stop vehicle immediately and contact dealer. To me, that does not sound good at all. Please help, what do you think? Usually when you have a hybrid vehicle that refuses to start, it refuses to start for a safety reason. Maybe it thinks there is a short in a hybrid battery. Maybe it thinks you don't have no pressure at all mm -hmm. for the brake system. So if you went anywhere, your car will just run into things without using brakes. Uh, there are several reasons. If your car ever says, stop, don't operate, it will not go ready on as you're asking, you should have the car towed to a dealer. There are many things that can cause a car to be unsafe to drive mm -hmm. and for the computers on board to decide that this car is unsafe to drive. If you see this, don't try to fix the car. Please have a car towed to a dealer's best, but you have a car, the car needs to be fixed before you drive it because the car has decided it is unsafe to start. Right, and, and I, I would guess anytime I see the term brake malfunction, that sounds catastrophic. So but brake malfunction. If you kept driving it, I mean. Brake malfunction could be catastrophic. If you have no brakes, the car has all electronic brakes and uh, we have seen, I've seen in a few Highlanders, I've seen in a few places where the hybrid uh, brake booster mm -hmm. will leak and will set a code. It normally is not bad enough to stop the car or go to ready on. But if you see it, once you start the car, if you could, now you're not going to have brakes. So do not operate the car. If it says go to dealer, please go to dealer. <laughs> All right. You heard it from Ali first. This next one deals with two, I repeat, two different hybrid battery types, and I'm sure they're talking about nickel metal hydride versus lithium ion. They wanna know, will Toyota give us a choice of which battery we wanna put in which model car? And then the follow-up is, which one's better for Northeast cold temperatures? And I'm sure somebody up in New England or maybe out in Denver, they're waiting for your answer. First of all, I have seen some people that mod their cars to run on lithium when they were made for nickel metal. However, batteries are all about chemistry and there is a huge difference in discharge between lithium batteries and nickel metal hydride. Uh -huh. Lithium batteries can discharge a lot faster. It takes a different type of charging to charge a nickel metal hydride mm -hmm. than it is a lithium battery. If you mix these combination of chemistries and you have the safe charging equipment, you're looking for a fire. So does Toyota recommend something that's unsafe? No. When you mix nickel metal hydride, and I've seen it done in cars before, 
with lithium that's all aftermarket, you're risking a fire. If you have the option, don't do it. And as far as the Northeast cold temperatures, which batteries better? I, I assume that Toyota has made them so that both of them can work in cold conditions. Yes, in extreme cold, uh, polar temperatures, they may be different. Uh, maybe nickel metal hydride is a little bit better. Lithium will discharge a lot faster. But they're both going to be fine if you're driving it up in Maine during a, a snowstorm, that type of a thing, right? In some totally electric cars, they have heaters that heat the battery to a normal temperature in when it's super cold. Fancy. To make the battery work. If like the pimp my ride. <laughs> where, the, where the battery normally sits, uh -huh. if you're doing minus 40 degrees, I wish you were not there. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if uh, super cold weather, maybe nickel metal hydride is better, but the way the vehicle is designed with this battery, they should probably both operate the same conditions, no matter if you use a nickel metal hydride or lithium, they have temperature sensors mm -hmm. that'll correct the temperature of the battery before you get going. Okay, great. So you've got peace of mind if you're driving in a lot of winter conditions, you'll be okay either way. All right, this one here deals with the life of the brake pads and the rotors with a hybrid. So is the life of the brake pads and rotors lengthened with regenerative braking? If so, how long? When the brakes are applied, all the time the pads will contact the rotors mm -hmm. to slow the car down, just like any normal car. However, they get assistance from the hybrid transmission and a hybrid engine. The hybrid transmission turns into a giant generator, takes the force from the uh, rotors in the front, mm -hmm. and puts power back into the battery. So you're using the brake pads, however, you're using some of that energy and storing it as voltage into the battery. So yes, the pads do extend life, and uh, I have seen appraisers go over 150, 160,000 miles but normally about 100,000 miles on a hybrid vehicle is normal. As we normally see brake pads on Camrys and things that are not hybrid, maybe 60 to 80,000 miles. Okay. All right, so this one has to do with warning lights that we'd, we would see on our dash, on our multi-information display. What is that triangle light and why does it appear on my dash? That is the master warning light. The master warning light comes on when there's an issue anywhere. If you have an issue with your cruise control, you're gonna get a light coming on somewhere and a master warning light coming on. If you drive with the hood not latched, once your car comes to a certain speed, the car will look around, find out if the doors are open, see the hood is unlatched, the master warning light will come on. If there's a brake issue, if there's any issue, there is probably a light somewhere else in the car that says, hey, check, engine is running rough, brakes are not doing right, hood is open, doors are open, and then a master warning light comes on. Master warning light does not come on when someone is not tightening their seat belts. Right. But any, anywhere there's a major issue with somewhere else in the car, you get that problem plus master warning light. If you don't see a check engine light, ABS, VSC light, hood open light, then you probably need to bring your car in and have us check and see what's going on with the car. Okay, and does that ever come on if it um, when you say when it says uh, service due soon or yes, something it does. Like that? Yes, it does. So you might be due for your five thousand mile service, and that yes. could also come on. Absolutely, that's the same thing I was I was saying. You see two lights. First of all, is the master warning light. Right. Then there is a warning in the dash that says you're due for service, and the only thing we do when we change the oil or rotate the tires, it'll re reset. The rotate the oil and the changing of the oil and rotating the tires, uh -huh. and the master warning light automatically will go off because now it knows your car has been serviced. Got it. And whew, that was a lot. Thank you so much, Ali. That was really good info today, and I'm sure everybody appreciates it. Any questions that you have about vehicles, hybrids, non-hybrids, older vehicles, newer vehicles, when you're thinking of buying, just leave it on the comment section, and we'll try to get to that in a future episode. Thanks, everybody, so much, and thank you, Ali, so You're much. You're welcome, Jeff. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Peace.